What's up, Doc? Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing very well today. And if you're new to the channel, then welcome as well. It's amazing to see so many of you guys that are new here. Thank you so much for subscribing. Today we're going to be watching What's Up Doc from 1972. The guy in the film, the image that I saw of him makes me think of Brad from Rocky Horror Picture Show. This film has been requested over on Patreon. If you want to see the full reaction to this, you can see it over on the Patreon page. Yes, I do give commentary as well as reacting. I just say what comes to my brain, so... Hope you guys can enjoy this and join me. Really quick update, just letting you know this was filmed prior to December 2023. The reason I'm saying this is because sadly on the 8th of December 2023, Ryan O'Neill passed away. The guy was absolutely amazing, such a genius with comedy, and I just wanted to make you guys aware because I do speak about him in the present tense, and I don't make any mention of it in the video whatsoever because it hadn't happened yet. I'm in no way releasing this because of that. I'm just releasing this because it was requested a while back and highly suggested for me to watch. And I wanted to make this little update whilst I'm filming the next reaction, which is Sunset Boulevard from 1950. Thank you very much for that request as well. But anyway, I hope you enjoy. Here's the video. I like the song. Barbara Streisand, Ryan O'Neill, that must be the guy, in a Peter Bogdanovich production. It's... You're the top. What's up, Doc? What's up, Doc? I like that it's a photo album. Or if it's to do with a wedding, then a, a wedding album. Yeah, Mickey Mouse! <laughs> Madam, you're the top. Also, this is a 1972 film. I thought they would have had the credits at the end. Once upon a time, there was a plaid overnight case. Oh, getting a Paddington vibe from that. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a overnight plaid case. Or plaid overnight. He seems a bit fishy. Oh, he's a spy. They're gonna get the wrong bag, aren't they? He's phoned it in. He's just collected. I'm gonna pretend you're uh, playing golf. Follow that cow! <laughs> <laughs> Wrong man. That's the guy that we saw. Oh, okay. Howard! That's Ryan O'Neill? Howard, when I ask you to wait for me somewhere, I expect you to stay there. Yes, you are. It is exactly 6.15. Yes, you Put these things. Okay. She do my head in. She's a planner. Like she plan plans everything. Oh no, they staying in the same hotel as well. Not conspicuous at all. Yeah. Oh, because they're so heavy, Ross. My God, everybody's got the bags. There she is, Barbara Streisand. I've got to say, she's gorgeous. I've not... <laughs> it's stuck to the ceiling. I've not seen many of her older films. I think I've seen one or two, but I don't remember. He's got pizzas. Oh, mind, mind the cows. <laughs> so we're going to get a bit slapstick in this. I'd like to come here on our honeymoon. Wanted to go to San Francisco on your honeymoon. This is San Francisco, Howard. Of course it is. <laughs> Hey, just... what are you trying to do? Are you all right back there? I hope nothing's broken. Oh, it's just a bump, Howard. It's the equipment. I know how you feel, mister. I hate it when my igneous rocks are even touched. <laughs> not those igneous rocks, sir. Yeah, not very conspicuous. Oh, come on. You can't hide on the stairs. You could have gone the other side of the cars. <laughs> Mind the traffic. Mind the traffic! Oh! <laughs> it's like you bust my door, man! Try to remember the film that I've seen her in. Uh, for the life of me, I don't know catalogue of films, so sorry. Yeah, Miss, may I help you, please? I was wondering if my friends were still here. They believe they were in room 1717. Of course, yeah. We're sorry, but that room is vacant. I don't understand. At the Hotel Crystal. This is the Bristol, madam, not the Crystal. Then one of us must be in the wrong hotel. <laughs> I think it's you, ma'am. It's so nice to have you back with us. Thank you, Hans. Fritz. What happened to Hans? 
There is no Hans, Mr. Van Haskell. There is only me. Oh my god. What a shame. She doesn't pay attention to people's names at all. Oh my god. Boy? <laughs> He's like, that's money. Tomorrow, I want you to put it in the hotel safe for me. Oh, this is gonna go so wrong. There's like five bags now. <laughs> Come on, boy! Oh. oh. So there's loads of people hunting the uh, plant bags. I would like a um, a double thick roast beef sandwich, medium rare on rye bread, and a coffee. Coffee. Some more coffee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Room 1717. He's checking into room 1717. Carrots. What's up, Doc? Oh, Howard, go to the drugstore and get some aspirin. Is that why it's called? What's up, Doc? These are my pre Paleozoic Tambula rocks. Don't touch those rocks. I will take care of those. You go to the drugstore and be back in my room in five minutes. Yes, sir. Flan. Flat. Your bell is flat. It's half a tone off. He's still chasing after him. She's looking at you. I'd be the same as him though, I'd be like, she's looking at me. What's up, Doc? I beg your pardon. Yeah. I've got to stop meeting like this. You see, I just came in here for something for a headache. I was right about the carrot. I need an awful big glass of water to get that down. Oh, no, no, you see, <laughs> I'm a musicologist. Ah, uh, that's what he does, the tones. Musical relationship to igneous rock formations. Uh-huh. Oh, but I guess you're not really interested in igneous rock formations. Not as much as I am in the metamorphic or sedimentary rock categories. So who is? I relate primarily to micas. You can keep your pyroxenes, magnetized, and coarse grain plutonics as far as I'm concerned. Hello. I forgot why I came in here. Headache. The tablets. Go and get the tablets, my boy. Quickly, before your other half has a hissy fit. She talks that much, the other half, that is. Was it something I said? I beg your pardon. Listen, what do you think I am? A piece of ripe fruit you can squeeze the juice out of and cast aside? Miss, I think you're making a mistake. Sure, that's all I am to you, a mistake. A clerical error. Erase me, forget you even know my name. I don't know you. He's like, I don't know you. How do you do? <laughs> you know it now. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. 3% of all fatal accidents happen in corner drugstores. Hey, what's going on back there? Nothing. <laughs> For a little uh, aspirin. You're gonna need some aspirin once she's finished. Something's gonna happen. My husband will pay for this. No. I don't want people falling down in here. Well, we're on our honeymoon. No. I love that she's just made up this whole little story room. How much do I owe you? Your wife back there said you got this as well. 68.29. Aspirin? I beg your pardon. Well, how much is it without buffering? What's that? A radio? Yeah, radio. I don't I'm not want getting a radio. radio. What about your wife? I don't want a wife. I mean, I haven't got a oh, wife. Come oh, come on, Steve. Buy the radio. It's on sale. <laughs> so, my name's not Steve. Oh, that's a honeymoon? Hey, what about the aspirin? Wait up, Steve. Oh. No. Oh, am I sorry. <laughs> Great. You just ruined my good suit. The one that I'm trying to get is why is, is she after Steve. him? It's Howard Bannister, and now that I've told you that- Is she just taking a liking to him because he's in the room that she likes? So you've mistaken me for someone else. Why'd you follow me into the drugstore? Y you did. Or I had a headache. Still have it? No. Howard, see? Howard, that's it. Where have you been? I had a little problem. She just gave him the name, Steve. Howard. We're not married. Congratulations. But we will be soon. Condolences. Who is this person? Eunice, I swear this is a bizarre joke. Sure, Eunice. it's easy for you. Trust me, Barbara Streisand is much better over the, the wife. Women, 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 you call it joking. Eunice and I, we call it lust. I just love her personality. <laughs> what did you do? Hmm. Oh, good evening, sir. Good evening. We don't want to wake up the little one. No, we sure don't. Oh, that's what she said earlier. Kids are asleep. Don't bring it in or knock on the door because I'm just putting my little one to sleep. Dude, don't spy. No, oh, it's not going to be the right bag, is it? I don't think he's spying. Just uh, <laughs> looking uh, for my key. Maybe the door is open. Oh, I'm sure I locked it. Door is open. Look at there. Good night. Don't forget your dinner. I'll get it later. Thanks. And your bag. Eunice. <clears throat> Eunice. Who's there? It's me, Howard Bannister, your fiance. Wait, why are they in a different room? Is it because they're yet to be married? The tie in your hand. The one you're holding. Oh yes, of course. Which is yet another plaid. <laughs> no, don't go in there, it's his room. Oh god, if the to-be wife goes in there. What's she doing in the room? God, everyone's got a habit of this. Oh, that's the one with the diamonds in it, yeah. I, uh, dinner's here. 
So they're all after different plaid bags with different things in them. She's like, that's my dad out. You just stop it. I don't know who he is, but I hate him. You must have said something to encourage that girl. What do you mean, Eunice? After all, you are a man. Yes, that's true. She is a woman. Yes, that's true, too. In the same way that I am a woman. Do well, I don't I'm... think of you as a woman. <laughs> Well, but yeah. I am a woman. Oh, I know that. Why is he getting married to her? As the years go by, romance fades and something else takes its place. Do you know what that is? Senality. Trust. A pain. I want you to make a good impression on Mr. Larrabee, what you're going to say to him. What? Probably say something like, hello there, Mr. Larrabee, I'm Howard. You are not. I'm not Howard. <laughs> Hi, my name's Steve. Mr. Larrabee, I am Dr. Howard Bannister. Why don't you just do it instead? Act friendly, but impersonal. I'll act friendly. Okay, he's trying to undo the I'll door. Pull the door. <laughs> well, goodbye, Yunus. Oh no, is she gonna come out of the room? Just remember, everything depends on this. Of course, everything. What is it? Mr. Howard. It's a privilege to meet you, sir. Likewise. <laughs> It's fascinating that they're all after, I know why they were after the first bag, because of the top secret documents. Second bag I'm presuming is only being sought after because of the uh, thingy. I thought that was the front door. Oh, it's on the back of the door. Oh, that's cool. Never seen them before. It's like a cupboard within, like stuck on the back of the door. But yeah, so the other bag was because of the diamonds. Oh, they've got a banquet on. Oh, lovely. A bit of free nosh. <laughs> Oh, it's the Congress of Musicologists. Lovely. I feel for him with the wife. Or with the to-be woman, anyway. He's not the guy, is he? Larrabee, it's a privilege to meet you. I'm Dr. Howard Bannister. And I'm your head waiter. <laughs> Can I show you to your table, sir? <laughs> Here you are, sir. Thank you. I don't drink. You're upside down, sir. I'm upside down. <laughs> oh, his brain, bless him. He's like, I know I'm not Howard. I'm not upside down. Is he just taking the wrong bag? What was the other thing on the floor? Give me the chief. I'll tell him I got the documents. I don't know if he did though. It's an interesting story. So far. <laughs> I'm your Simon. You're upside down. I know. And I suppose you have not read my series of articles. I haven't, I'm terribly sorry. Foolish, foolish of you. It was that series of articles that helped me to become one of the two finalists. I know him from something, when he's a lot older. I think you're oversimplifying my thesis. I never oversimplify. <laughs> there is an old Croatian saying, Balak <laughs> Sarovic, <laughs> called... Uh... Oh, Mr. Larrabee? That's the guy that he's after. Mr. Larrabee, I'm your Simon. I would like to say on behalf of myself, and mm. of course all of my colleagues at the conservatory. Yes, this must be Mr. It's a privilege. Although I want to... Mr. Howard. Personally have nothing but contempt. It's such a wacky film. There's so many big characters. And if I'm not mistaken, this must be it's Mr. Larrabee. Really? <laughs> it's just a dance. Oh, my. oh, 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 oh. <laughs> You're upside down. Dr. Bannister. Mr. Privilege, it's a Larrabee. No, no, that's not it. <laughs> Thank you, I, I don't drink. Neither do I. You don't. Well, shall we sit down, gentlemen? I believe After we're all sharing. You. Oh, God, don't keep taking him away. <laughs> oh, Mr. Larrabee. That's... How do you do? Oh, thank you. Is that the guy from Christmas Vacation? Well, adventure in the sky. What's the it is. The guy in the RV out the out front. God, he's a lot younger, isn't he? This must be Miss Bernard. How do you do? <laughs> you! <laughs> you! Ness. You, Ness, Howard. Yeah, you, Ness. That's down, Mark. Sit down, dear. How? How? Howard. Howard. He's looking stuck on names. Probably the excitement of meeting you. Of course. My heart is going a mile a minute. Why, well, you can just feel it pounding. Can't you feel it? Uh, yes, I think I can. Yeah. <clears throat> it's amazing. You should feel it, gentlemen. <laughs> can I sit next to you, Miss Grant? Don't give them that idea. This is definitely not Bannister. This is not the seating arrangement. No. You like Emerson. I adore him. He's like, that's not Eunice. She's a delight, Bannister. Admit you're a lucky dog. I'm a lucky dog, but... She's a better Eunice than the other one. No! Uh, what Howard means is that everyone calls me Burnsy. Burnsy. Uh -huh. Burnsy. I like that. Burnsy. <laughs> God help them. Help? <laughs> Was it a fourth wall break to us to say help? I, I love it. That's good. And I'm liking that little layout of the hallway with the people going in and out as well. It's got like a bit of Bond slash Scooby-Doo thing going on with the bags and people finding it and weird mix. Bond and Scooby-Doo boom. Like a goofy secret agent. Oh no, he's now going to pick up that bag. 
Oh no. We are familiar with your fiance's studies. You presume correctly, Mr. Simon. Rocks. This is not your experience. Then you must share his inordinate interest in rocks. Oh, passionately, you might say that it was a rock that brought us together. You're not Eunice. Neanderthal man found a method of making music out of minerals. I believe I can prove that actual melody. Is that a real thing? As far back as 7 million BC. Or is this just made up for the film? Howard has had discussions with Leonard Bernstein about conducting an avalanche in E flat. That is at the letter deck loss. Hey. She's unbelievable. Yes, she is. <laughs> she is rather unbelievable. I'm right here. I'm sorry, miss, I have no badge in that name. It's Burns. Eunice Burns. Because the badge has already been taken. Yep, has he got the bag thinking I it's got the, the jewels. Get out of here, but don't let anyone see you. Thinking it's the diamonds. Roger. Fritz. It's not. You should have checked the bag. You're getting yourself into a whole puddle of water. Oh my god. What? No. It's like musical chairs with rooms. What's going on? Jesus. Why do they all have the same bag though? Is there a sale? I did nothing. I know nothing. You have got to get out of here. I miss all the good stuff that's coming. She will be here any minute. That's the good stuff that's coming. Well, she won't be because the name badge. My groundbreaking scholarship cultivated a rich harvest. Yes. Yeah. Must have taken a lot of fertilizer. Miss Burns was telling you that Burnsy was calling her Burnsy. What was it, Bannister? Some incredible adventure you had on your flight here. Yes. No. Like, that's not the woman I had the adventure with. One of the pilots fainted went into this power dive. Well, Howard took his igneous rock formations into the cockpit and selected two of them with a particularly high magnetic content. She's brilliant. Set up an electrically induced field pattern on the gyro I'm having a nightmare. <laughs> you cannot escape. I am not a Eunice Burns. I am the Eunice Burns. Miss Burns is wearing her badge. She's already gone inside. <laughs> that is impossible. Because I'm right here. Perhaps you're at the wrong convention. This is outrageous. I find that story intensely moving. I find that story is difficult to swallow. Would you like to swallow one sandwich to knuckles? <laughs> I have to talk to you privately. Meet me under the table. Sam, what? Oh my goodness. There goes my napkin. Jesus. She will be here any minute. You have got to stop repeating yourself. I am not. She's going to turn up. Bang. Here's the head. God, I'm repeating Listen, myself. Steve, you don't want to marry Eunice? I'm not Steve. I'm Howard. Neither of you wants to marry Eunice. Why do you yeah. say that? But you don't want to marry someone who's going to get all wrinkled, lined, and flabby. Everybody gets wrinkled, lined, and flabby. By next week? <laughs> you just can't keep away from each other, can you? <laughs> oh, <I> just... <laughs> Everyone's there. It's a party. What's going on? Anything wrong? No, no, no. What is that? How it has about vocal reverberation and spinal pressure. I think I read a monograph on that. Yeah, the second guy in there, the monograph guy, just said it. I've seen him before. What kind of wine are you serving at table one? Dicks, they're all under the table. This girl of yours is fun, and if you win that grant, you can consider it her victory as well as your own. I certainly do. Good on you. Oh no. Get her out of here! The fake Eunice is much better than the real Eunice. Who is that dangerously unbalanced woman? That's Eunice. Howard, tell them who I am! Tell them it's the other girl's name, please. <laughs> I never saw her before in my life. Yes, Howard. Yes, I have exercised the demons. I love that. The shoe lines on the floor. He did a good thing. Saved my whole lot of pain and trouble in the long run. And in the year. Oh, I put it in 1714. 1714. What kind of a house detective are you? The wrong room. I will return the case to her room. You will detain her. How do I do that? Use your charm. Oh my god. Use your charm. He's gonna come across. <gasps> no! It just knock her over. I'm sorry, I tripped you up. Madame, it is I, Fritz. I suppose you have come to apologize. <laughs> One of our guests has lost something. I fail to see how it could possibly be in here unless it crawled in under its own power. Exactly. It's a rat. Has lost his pet snake. <laughs> No, yes, here, calm yourself. Pop out of the room. Put yourself in the bathroom for a few yeah. moments while I search your room. Whoa, 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 what if it's in there? Snakes, as you know, live in mortal fear of uh, water. Tire. <laughs> it's all right, Miss Burns, you can come out now. Oh, he's just taking that. <laughs> it's hilarious, but so frustrating at the same time. Don't start chasing her down the hallway. Oh my god. He's going to get arrested. I didn't see a thing. Ow! 
Well done. Have a little romantic uh, moment with each other. My name is not Steve. How am I going to explain all this to Eunice? Don't. Get rid of her. You go right down to her room, right? Now, she will have been crying, so her eyes will be puffy and then bloodshot, you know, and her nose is all red and running, but you overlook that. Stare purposefully into those red rims, swollen eyes, and <laughs> you say, Eunice, my dear, there's been a terrible misunderstanding. I've behaved like Cad, a bounder, but now I see everything clearly. I don't want to be with you. I'm going to put you into a home. <laughs> that is not amusing. We've got that Larrabee Grant virtually so We? Up. I helped after all, he calls me Bernsey. She did. Wait, you are not Bernsey. Bernsey is Bernsey. I mean, Eunice is Bernsey. I mean, she isn't Bernsey. Nobody is Bernsey. The point is... Mm -hmm. Oh, God, I've forgotten the point. They're a good match. Sort of. That money would enable me to establish certain... Oh, it's going in. For the Must you stand quite so... Kiss. I'm very nearsighted. Where was I? He's like, is it, is it warm in here? <laughs> to examine evidence of prehistoric art forms of Ordination or Upper Paragordia. Well, where do you come up with those names? It's just a wild guess. I want you to go away now. Oh, Steve. It's not Steve. I know you don't mean any harm. You're just different. Thank you. A good different. I'm going to try to be the same. Same as what? Same as people who aren't different. A good. Thank you. And goodbye. Well, let's not say goodbye. Let's just say au revoir. Until we meet again. Say goodbye. Ah. Uh. What's he doing? He's got to go that way anyway. Yeah. He's like, dang, now I need to go out there by myself. Enter Mrs. Van Hoskins' room. What if she wakes up and sees me? You will tell her you are smitten with her? Make passionate love to her. Oh my. He really is gonna. Couldn't I just kill her? <laughs> what? No. He's gonna get arrested. Oh. Careful you don't set the room alight. Oh. Your real hair is better than that hair. Thanks. Obviously she's, I'd like to say she's self-conscious, maybe? That's where he opens it and realises it's the wrong thing. Oh no. But my bag, why is it out here? <laughs> it's a way you can access them. <laughs> Well, that's a cool idea. So you have access to one side of it, so you can put stuff like a suit in it for dry cleaning, and then you can open it from the other side. Never seen that before, though. But... She's done it very tightly. Hello out there. Hello. Oh no, he's just in his underwear and a bow tie. Must be brain damage. What? Is she in the bathroom? <laughs> I believe you dropped something. What do you think you're doing? I think I'm taking a bath, aren't I? It's like he's... Who do you think they'll arrest? The girl in the tub or the guy with his pants down? Pants down, just wearing a bow tie. I do not like to act rashly, but you are the last straw that breaks my camel's back. You are the plague. You bring havoc and chaos to everyone. Why me? Why? But she's a beautiful plague. Does you look cute in your pajamas, Steve? <laughs> Get out! Right now? Yes! No! Wait a minute! <laughs> yeah, yeah, not not right now. I think I've broken several major bones. Don't where it hurts. help the me. Alien, the sacred... Oh my god, imagine if the girl walks in on this. Now the phone is ringing. I'll get it. I can do it. Hello, yes. Eunice who? Oh, Eunice. Howard, what's going on in there? Why are you breathless? Watch, I fell down. Are you hurt? Please, please. I'm coming in there. I wish you wouldn't do that. Oh god. I was gonna say, if she speaks up in the background. I think I'll get dressed now. Howard, what's that? <gasps> no! I heard a voice say something. It's the television. Yes! No, say it again. Getting dressed for the big battle. It was a woman's voice. You don't have a bathrobe I could put on, do you, Steve? <laughs> I'm coming in! That's it. That's it. I'm dead. Bye-bye. Only one thing left to do. What's that? What, what? Eunice is coming. He's jumping. Like that, and I'm going to jump. Oh, Steve, wait! Oh, no. That's even worse now. No. Wait, with the clothes back then. I would like the key to 1716. Sorry, lady, I'm looking for something. No, we'll see, I ordinarily... Uh-oh. <laughs> now he's going out the window as well. They're both going to be on each side of the building. Howard, open this door immediately! Howard Bannister, I am talking to you! Howard, I know you're... <laughs> <laughs> Look, there's a ledge! A ledge Oh my god. One, you can't put her out there. Temper. I can't! Oh, just let us. She studies karate! Just let her come in. You're better off with Barbara Streisand. Bye! Hello, Eunice. Come on in. Oh my god. Oh my god. If you have betrayed my trust in you... Why is there a bathroom? What's that? That's a bath, Eunice. I was going to take a bath. 
Since when have you taken bubble bath? Since the stress. It came out of the faucet that way, Eunice. Why are your rocks in the bathroom? I don't know. I wish I did. <laughs> because I was going to look at them while I was in the bath. We could have said. Oh god, oh god, oh god. It's not there. <laughs> Oh my god, this really is like a an episode of Scooby Doo. Like, doo, 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 doo. Different rooms. Oh, don't you go in another room now. Is that the guy's room or is the is the end room the guy's room with the floppy hair? You are not being open with me. I'm always open. What are you hiding at the window? Good evening. Where do you want it, ma'am? Where do I want what? Mustard on top. I don't want food. Room 1716, right? The girl rang. I hear knocking. Get your nerves. I thought the, the curtain was going to open then. <gasps> no, 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 no. <gasps> oh. Dude, help her. Clean with the window. Too much fresh air, dear. Very harmful. Trust me, so is a fall. <laughs> Fantastic. Howard, if you don't turn that down. Just unplug it. We're trying to get some sleep down yes. here. Yes. <laughs> I might be hardwired into the wall because I think I think some of them were back then. Pull the plug out. Yeah, it's hardwired in. Bang! Skills may help. Yeah, like that. No! Bang! <laughs> this is madness. Absolute madness. And then she's gonna pop up. Don't do that, it's electrical. Please, for the love of God. Uh, uh, it's like you've ruined the room. What have you done? For the love of God, somebody pick up Barbara Streisand. I've completely forgotten Barbara's real name in this. Uh, sorry, uh, character name. No! No, wrong room. It's like a Benny Hill sketch. Yet yeah, no. Uh, Burns, what are you doing in Mr. Bannister's bedroom? Don't you know the meaning of propriety? Uh, <laughs> it's like that's it. I'm going on a vacation. <laughs> I've had enough. His worst nightmare. Every single thing that could have gone wrong went wrong. <laughs> I love that his his stick bag is still burning. Why is the ceiling so low in that room? Oh, it's just to store the tables, right? I thought that was the, the dining room. I was like, what the heck? I thought the other guy was going to be asleep in his room with a window. <laughs> yeah, he is. But, oh my God, the state of... <gasps> no, everything is ruined. Well, I knew that from the day before, but... Hello? <laughs> it's, a, it's a door. Oh my god. Come in, it's broken. D -d -d I mean, it's open. My beautiful hotel, what have you done? Yes. Good morning. No, I don't think so. The manager of what's left of the hotel. Yeah. I'm awfully sorry about this whole mess here. Usually this doesn't happen. Mr. Bannister, I have a message for you from the staff of the hotel. <laughs> Get out! Goodbye. That's the entire <laughs> message? We would appreciate it if you would check out. When? Yesterday. <laughs> that soon? Right now. I don't suppose you have another room you could let- No. These are my igneous tambula rocks. They're not, I don't think. Yes, of course they are. <laughs> He's like, you know, you're not right in the head, I don't think. <laughs> Where were you thinking of going now? Well, my fiance, Miss Sleep, is still burning and <laughs> Miss Burns is still sleeping. I thought maybe I would just sit in the lobby and wait. Oh, don't. Just, just go. I'm awfully sorry about the room. Oh, that's all right. We have lots of others. Surprised he's not sending him the bill. Any of it. He's, he's not getting into trouble for any of it. What the heck? The guy's like, no, I don't want anything else. Just go away. That's a nice view. Nice place. Oh, piano. He starts playing, she starts singing. That's how they make the money back. It's so weird because I thought she was going to be sleeping in this. All the gin joints in all the towns in all the world. He walks in a mine. Play a tram. 
<laughs> in case you don't know, I've already watched Casablanca on the channel, so you can check that out if you want to. You must remember this. A, a kiss, kiss is just a kiss. Apply. And when they still say. <clears throat> <laughs> I love you. Yeah. I didn't realize that. I didn't realize she was going to be under the blanket, though. What's wrong? The future. What's the matter with it? <laughs> I was a political science major at Colorado State. Oh, hey, look, you got a case just like mine. Just like a lot of people. When what were you trying to become? A graduate. It was important to my father. He was very upset when I was asked to leave the first college I ever went Ask. to. You want to know why? Did she wreck the place? <laughs> But something always seemed to go wrong. Yes, I can believe that. <laughs> Not my fault. What happened? Nothing. It was just a, a, a little classroom. It, it sort of burned down. Burned down? Well, blew up, actually. Political activism? Chemistry major. Happens everywhere she goes. Hey, I Make forgot! I forgot to give phone. you this letter! Did you open this? How else could I have read it? <laughs> Good point. The Grant! Mr. Larrabee! Yes, yes, oh, yeah, because he got... Mm. Oh, boy, the 20,000! I know, I know. Mm. I've got to tell Eunice. Of course you do. Yeah, don't. She is my fiance. Of, of course, of course she is. You're still kissing her. Just to be the first, or at least the second. Yeah. Yeah, just, just get rid of Eunice. Where was I? <laughs> Eunice. Who's Eunice? Exactly. Oh God, is Eunice gonna walk in? Oh no. Okay. He's. <laughs> Oh, Eunice, open the door. I have some wonderful news. Don't mention the girl, please. Do not want your apologies, Howard. All right, Eunice, no apologies. Have you no heart? She's like, not again. <laughs> please let me read you this letter. Please join me and my guests. Don't forget to bring your charming fiancé. No, don't say it. Don't say it. I fail to see how he could refer to me as your charming fiancé when he has never had the pleasure. Yeah, it was the other girl. And I will follow as soon as possible. The address, please. Oh, I would have just left it. Oh, no. It's not that bag. Trust me. Although it's now not going to be, yeah. 888 Russian Hill. 459 Dorella Street. Eunice is going to get dressed and meet us there. Sure, what can go wrong? What? She's coming as well? I just say I'm a girl you picked up in a drugstore. No. <laughs> don't say anything. Right, I don't say anything, I just sit there and nod. But why is he, if he's going with Eunice, then why is he bringing her? She did get the deal. Uh, Miss Eunice Burns, please. No. Yes? Miss Bynes, uh, this is Sylvia, Mr. Larrabee's personal secretary. There's been a little mix-up in the invitation for this afternoon. You're not invited. The address of the luncheon is four, five, and nine. Yes, second floor. I see. Well, thank you, Miss... Uh, Louise. I thought you said Sylvia. Yes, Sylvia Louise, you know, with a hyphen. <laughs> I would have heard it and gone. Sounds like the girl last night. Yeah, it's not that bad. Excuse me. <laughs> He's like, oh my god, there's so many. It could be any of them. There's two, now three. Ah! Help! Oh, my jeweled thieves, robbers! <laughs> the rotten scoundrels have left with all of them. Uh, yeah, you're in your nightwear running around. The right address? 459 Dorella Street, lady. Is it being knocked down? <laughs> oh no, it's the docks. No, 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 it's not the place. Come on, you see that and you don't think. That's gotta be it. You check, ask him to wait, and then you leave. Not that you need to check. It's very obviously not that place. There's gonna be either a homeless guy in there or a rat or something. Some guy comes to the door. What are you doing? Of course, there's mold all over. Uh, this can't be the Larrabee. It's the guy. Why, those are Howard's. What on earth are you doing with Howard Bannister's rock? <laughs> yeah, because she heard the name... Uh-oh. <laughs> the rocks thing. Are they thinking Jules? And Barbara Streisand's character got the name of the address from when the guy was on the phone earlier. Yeah. I didn't piece that bit together. But... Oh, very futuristic. Our two stars, congratulations. Now I have something very important to tell you. I want you to come with me, Burnsy. <laughs> That's, it's not Burnsy. Oh, no, thank you. I'll hold on to it. That's going to be the top secret documents, isn't it? All of your other clothes burn up? Huh? Yeah, the suit looks good. What I want to say now... Appreciates your wonderful hospitality. About <laughs> compelling sentiments. Did anyone ever tell you that you were very, very sexy? <laughs> they never will. I myself have a little announcement to make. It was the... The little research on Ms. Del Bancaster and Ms. Burns, and I think I that think this entire company has given us a, a little recital on those rocks of his. Oh no, 
No. It's either going to be... It's not going to be his rocks. It's either top secret documents or diamonds. And I think top secret... Uh, try to point out. Uh oh. Is something the matter? Wrong case. Identical traveling cases. <laughs> Sweet, isn't it? <laughs> about them. Top secret documents. Yeah. I think a slight mistake yeah. has been made somewhere. A slight mistake. The identity of these alleged colleagues. She is definitely not herself. But nobody move. <laughs> Get over there. Oh no. Either one, just slide it over. He's like, I just want things to go back to normal, please. Don't move. Get away from that case. Oh my god. Can't come in here uninvited. Stand back, all of you. It's gonna fall off in a minute. Throw that up here. He throw the bag. Oh, that one's light. He can. Clothes fly out everywhere. Power, got oh. Your rock. Don't nobody oh do nothing. Oh my god. And the gun. For God's sake, don't shoot me. I'm part Italian. <laughs> don't you dare strike that brave, unbalanced woman! This is just what the hell? <laughs> walk scene. Nope. That. Nope. Just walk out. Mister. <laughs> All hell is broken loose. Oh. <laughs> no. I don't like the shaving cream. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's like I never liked this place. Don't give her a gun! The, the one bag they'll need is his bag, probably. And they will have every other bag other than his. Oh god, they're gonna put him in there and then ride that. Oh no. Oh no. This is amazing. Hey! That's, that's mine! Oh, bless him! Come on! Get on! On the front? Oh, this is brilliant. It's not going to stop. It's going to run over your foot. Oh. <laughs> Just, some... <laughs> Just some random guy. Okay, no problem. San Francisco hills are terrifying. Yeah. Oh, the suspension. Oh. It reminds me of, I haven't seen it yet, but the film Bullet. All of the things, and it reminds me of when I used to play the game Driver as well. Oh, this is, this is pinnacle of comedy. They're carrying a massive pane of glass across the street. <laughs> Straight to the X. Oh, oh no, did we go under the, oh. They're going to go through. Oh no, oh, they saved it, oh. The, just. Oh, that was close. The guy almost got hit. I mean, if he gets off and pushes, it it would be very, very helpful. Oh, now. No, the VW, no, no. He's like, what is going on? They're about to go through. I kind of feel... Not the VW. I kind of feel like no one's going to go through the pane of glass and then somebody's going to frighten them and they're just going to drop the glass. Oh, 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 oh no, oh no. Bless him. Just die. Oh no, there he goes, there he goes, there he goes. Yeah, he's going to go into the pane of glass. Yes, that's fantastic. That was proper... Old comedy. You can go, you can never go wrong with the Chinatown uh, parade. And they're gonna go they're gonna go along with a hat of their head now, yeah. This is fantastic. It reminds me of a scene I've seen in Herbie years ago. Well there's not much to see actually. They think it's funny. Oh my god. <laughs> They've just caused havoc. No, it's gonna go straight into a... Oh, into a costume rental. I thought it was gonna crash into like a Chinese restaurant or something and they'll be going, oh my god! Because a dragon just starts chasing him. <laughs> Please tell me a dragon.
run. I would have gone back in the shot. I don't want the alley comes out. Come on, alright, let's go. No, no, oh no. Are they gonna get in the just married car? No, 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 no. no. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. This is a terrible thing we're doing. I'm sorry, we'll be right back. That was close. <gasps> Love this. Yeah, there's a scene in um, in a film that I've seen years ago with a very similar sequence to this where they're all running around. Funny enough, VW Beetle. Um, I think it was Herbie. What are you doing? This is a one-way street. We're only going one way. Yeah. And they're just married. How quaint. Oh, God. Oh, God. What are you doing? Driving. I know that. <laughs> just not very well. You're going to get stuck. Oh. He's like, I give up. Will you turn off those things? Somehow they switched places. Turn here! I'm turning! <laughs> oh my god, the perfection of that. They're gonna just fly by. Yeah. Yes, I will! Yes, I will! Who are you? I am the Who cares who she is? Would you turn the radio off, please? It's just mayhem. Oh, the fresh tart, the fresh uh, concrete. Oh no, all of that work. <laughs> Back through the fresh tarmac. Yeah. Well, they missed it. Kind of. Not so much. Definitely not so much. God damn. <laughs> yeah. What would have made it even better is if he just slipped over on it. There's a good road right down there. <gasps> no, the stairs. <laughs> Fantastic. I can't see where we're going. They're really taking their uh, relationship one step at a time. But I'm. Duty, I can't I see. I know that. Get rid of the glasses. We can make it! No. We can make it! I don't think we can make no, it! No, no, you can't make it. Oh. Oh, God. None of you can make it. They were very far away. <laughs> I love the... I love the birds. Oh, my God. The birds are like, huh? Oh, oh. It would have been so good. Someone slams into the back of them and they go straight over. Please, please, please. Oh. <laughs> Sailing away, just married. Oh my god, they're going into the core. I found a brave looking lot, bailiff. Those are just the spectators, Your Honor. I was going to say. Get on with it. Oh, fat! Hey, 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 all those present, let me know. Court is now in session as a late play the 30th of July, 1972. His Honor Majesty, Bob, will be back for presiding. <laughs> Did the bailiff, what is he working? Uh... Yeah. Does the bailiff work in uh... demonstrations of any kind? Oh my God, he's got all of his pills and snacks. Just I will be yeah. merciless. Merciless. Yeah. Does the, the, the does the bailiff work in auctions? Some of us, Your Honor, feeling all right? No, my Honor is not feeling all right. My head is pounding and my nerves are completely shot. I know the feeling. Dear, what it's like to sit here night after night, watch this endless parade of human debris floating by. <laughs> I'd like to send every one of them to an island somewhere. Wrapped I mean, in heavy chains. They are just the audience. Do you know why I don't compassion? I just have too much compassion. Of course. You see this yellow pill? It's for my anxiety. You know what it's for? To remind me to take this blue pill. What's the blue one for, Judge? To remind me to take the other one. They're afraid to tell me. <laughs> I think it'll be pretty quiet tonight. Oh no, it won't be quiet. Oh my god. <laughs> quiet! Shut No, there are any further outbursts. Yes, yeah, she is. Made me smash my lifesavers. We're going to get this story calmly and clearly. <laughs> I love the judge. Just what the devil are these? They're bags. My rocks. Wait a minute, wait. Whom do these cases belong to? The Me? I want my bike back. I'll give you a bike back. I'll give you a broken back if you don't be quiet. What are these people being charged with? Well, that's kind of hard to say, Judge. Oh, the officer. Tim. We picked some of them out of San Francisco Bay. Entering the country illegally? No, sir. They drove in. Into the country? Into the bay. <laughs> oh, that's bad. <laughs> Unauthorized use of public waters, huh? Stolen car. 
Grand larceny. There was a shooting. With a deadly weapon. Broke into my home. Breaking and entering. And they well, brought her with them forcibly. The others did, but two of them didn't. That's kidnapping. They tried to me. That's unbelievable. <laughs> oh, I mean, I don't like her, but that was, that was harsh. As you can see, I represent our government. God bless it. Oh, shut up. God bless it. Persons movements for quite some time, and I can prove unauthorized possession of secret government underwear. <laughs> underwear? Watch out, those might be my rocks. Tell them to bring straight Jack. The people have a right to know. In the sort of size. He's going to be like, I'm following him, but I'm following him. And Everyone be quiet. Everyone Stop copying me. It may not look like much to you, but it's all I've got. Just about lost it. I am seriously considering setting up a torture chamber. Now, I want this whole ridiculous story told by one person. It's going to be Barbara Streisand, isn't it? <laughs> Howard's doing it. Judy, this is where you come in. I'm from Ames, Iowa. No excuse. No, sir, but it all started when I bumped my head in the taxi cab on the way in from the airport. When I went to the drugstore to get something for a headache, the druggist tried to charge me for a radio because she said her husband would pay for it. Who? And Eunice came along. Who's Eunice? Well, Eunice is my fiancé. You have a wife and a fiancé? No, sir, but uh, she kept calling me Steve. Your own fiancé you calls you Steve? No, sir, my wife, or rather the one who isn't my wife. It's going to be so confusing. Isn't your fiancé call you? Howard? The one who isn't my fiancé is also the one who isn't my wife. Other one who isn't my wife. Because I'm just getting the alcohol out in a second. <laughs> Let's just skip over no. this part. The one who isn't either. Everyone was calling her Burnsy. Why? Well, that's mm. short for Burns. Mm. That's Eunice's last name. Oh, so Eunice was there. Burnsy was there. The one who isn't Burnsy. What? I think I want to skip over this part, too. And everything burned. They asked me to leave the hotel. I really don't blame them. Good boy. Is there more? <laughs> oh, sure. There's more. Well, it's or rather Burnsy. <laughs> I thought that was alcohol. It's uh, more medicine, I think. Well, it gets kind of complicated now. Go <laughs> stressful. Me and you. You and me? No, not you. You. I am you. You and me? Oh. No, I Don't. am you. Stop saying that. No, he's his name's Hugh. Have what? Music. Can you fix a hi-fi? No, sir. Then shut up. And then they came in and tried to get all the cases. And the judge is now like, I've got your case now. <laughs> Just all take your own cases and go. Now this is my last warning! Judge is gonna have a heart attack. If it takes me the rest of my life, which may end at any minute. Yeah, it could. With the, uh, the agonizing tale. You and the blanket. You seem to have caused all this. Exactly yeah. what have you got to say for yourself? Nothing, Your Honor. Judy. Hello, Daddy. No! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> That's... Fantastic story, story, the writing, absolutely fantastic. And to top it all up, his desk falls apart. I love this film so much. And she's wearing plaid trousers and a plaid hat. She likes the plaid. Please tell me they're together now. Got your rocks back. He must be insane if he's not with her. Going somewhere? With you. Back to school. There are 1,145 institutions of higher education. Lots to choose. Don't burn this one down. Could you give me information about flights to Rio de Janeiro? It's a uh, lovely faint moustache, sir. It wasn't all so bad, was it? Of course, it was terrible that they took the grant away from me. Oh, no. Just isn't used to having to bail its founder out of jail. <laughs> this way of New making York, everything York, sound York. reasonable and... Just kiss each other. Bye-bye. Hey, look at that. Oh, no, not another one. Okay, it's them again. Oh my god. Well, I guess I owe you 20,000 bucks. Silly. Listen, if I paid you off at $10 a week. A lot of years. Miss Maxwell. Hello, young man. You found my diamonds. There was a $20,000 reward for the return of my jewel. 20 yeah. Pay for the damage done to your room. $2,800. And then at the car, you're in $2,400. $3,400 for the taxi. So she's not going to get any money back. <laughs> Couldn't see. A Chinese dragon. $3,850. Yeah, they're not going to get any money back. Probably owe them a penny or something. A grand total of $19,950, leaving $50. Mm -hmm. Hey, that leaves Perfect. only 38 years, 5 months, and 1 week. To See, sometimes it's kind of fun. Oh, come on. Go with her. Be with her. You're good for each other. You'll miss me. I know that too. Put it there, son. Howard! Howard Bannister! Oh, no. I've come oh, to see Mr. Simon. Oh, no, no. She's not with me. C'est la vie. Good check. That's very nice. You deserved it, Howard. There are some who think there's some merit in the study of prehistoric mineral tamping. Wonderful. Just what is that theory, Mr. Simon? 
Well, I doubt that you're qualified to understand it. Yeah. But the 16th and 17th century Swiss oh. composers developed a unitonic scale pattern. Is he faking it? You developed this theory. I don't want it. That should come as some shock to Professor Vinnemeyer. Yeah, who actually Vinnemeyer invented it. Vinnemeyer proposition. I don't know what you're sure talking you do. I don't know what you're talking about. Besides, that has never been translated. Just once, 1925, Harvard Press Musicological Review. Professor Heydrich Findelmeyer, the University of Zurich, 1911. Is he a fake? No wonder it sounded so familiar. I'm sorry, Simon. No, don't rip it up. Give it to the other guy. I'll give it to her. You're nasty. I don't like you, and I want you to go away. Um, Howard, the Foundation will make out a new check. <gasps> yes, he got the ground back. <laughs> yeah. More of the mad laughter. Stay on with me for a few days. In Ooh. separate quarters, of course. I had a feeling earlier in the car that they should get together. They're probably more of a match for each other anyway. And the lecture starts promptly at one. Oh my god. Well, Judy, I get... No. Judy? Judy, no. Oh, Judy. she's gone. Can't be gone. Oh, fleeting. Fleeting memories. He's probably just going to see her on the plane now, isn't he? She's there following him, behind him, sitting on the seat, either next to him or behind him. Hi there. <laughs> Looney Tunes. This whole film was very Looney Tunes, to be fair. Bugs Bunny! What's up, Doc? Yeah, what's up, Doc? No, no, I'm a transfer student. No, not the university, the... She the is there. Well, it's a small conservatory, but there are those who love it. <laughs> the professor there, whom I hope to be studying with, a, a brilliant man, Dr. Howard Perfect Bannister. match to see... Bugs Bunny. No banister, as in sliding down the... Yes, that's right, the nut with the rocks. Oh, hi. What's up, Doc? Do you happen to know that I uh, love you? Yeah. Mm. Listen, kiddo, you can't fight a tile wave. Let's be fair, though. <laughs> About those things I said, I mean, the way I acted, I'm sorry. They are perfect for each other. Love means never having to say you're sorry. That's the dumbest thing I ever heard. No, I think that is it's pretty true because you take each other for as you are. So. Love means never having to say you're sorry. Duck. Was that from a Looney Tunes episode or is that specifically... Did they make that for the film? I can't see it. But... That's awful! And today I'm starting my first picture. How the heck did they even get? There's something I gotta tell you. What is it, Judy? That for the end of it, I love it. It's them doing the song. No, let me say it. You're, You're the top. These actors in this, the judge especially, is incredible at the balmy wackiness. And I love the, the uh, photo album with everything in it, with the credits. You're the top. You're the top. Oh my god. <laughs> that was insane, that film, from start to finish, but in the best possible way. That was one of the greatest comedies I've uh, seen. And I've got to say, after that film, as with many people that probably saw What's Up Dog when it came out, and uh, after seeing other films that Barbara Streisand has been in, got a little crush on her, <laughs> not gonna lie. What's Up Dog? The whole cast is hilarious. Ryan O'Neill playing Howard was fantastic. Bouncing off of Barbara Streisand, um, they really worked well together. They had this kinetic kind of electric energy there. It was just perfect together. He was that kind of, huh, what's going on in every situation? And she was there, the ba -da, ba -da, ba -da, ba -da, giving him all of these little pointers to, to hit at in the conversation or in the thing that he was trying to do. Both Ryan and the director realized that it was their execution and timing that made the old movie comedians so great. I can't find my rocks. <laughs> One of my favorite scenes, I think, in that was the... I had loads of favorite scenes in that, like The Room, when she's there in just the towel and has to go out on the window ledge and the wife wants to go, or the, the fiance wants to come in and try and pull the lead out of the wall because the TV is too loud, bang. Everything goes wrong. That was one of my favorite scenes. And the other favorite scene as well was the car chase scene going down the hill with the pane of glass and the ladder. Absolute hysterics. Proper slapstick comedy, to be fair. Like back in the old days with uh, a bit of Laurel and Hardy. One of the movie fans who enjoyed the Marx Brothers, Laurel and Hardy, and the Keystone Cops was Peter Bogdanovich. I suppose there were some elements in there, because I mentioned Herbie quite a few times. I suppose there were some elements in there that were kind of similar to the way that Herbie 
those films were done. Could have been the Love Bug that I was thinking as well. Uh, Love Bug was 68. I did think 60s at first because I was f feeling like it was very 60s-esque, but they're so good. One of my favorite bits in the films uh, is when the guy goes, coffee. <laughs> I'm gonna make some more coffee. Which is funny because she says coffee the same way in this. So there were various little elements in there that reminded me of it. Anyway, back to this, back to What's Up Doc. I love the, the little play on at the beginning with the carrots, uh, the whole What's Up Doc. It makes you think of Bugs Bunny. And then at the end, somehow they got permission to use the, I imagine it was, it was Warner Brothers that did it, so that could be how they got some of the rights for it. We're able to have the What's Up Doc part of that little song thing from Looney Tunes. Editor Marty here, hello. Quickly interjecting, with that scene at the end of the film, the animation is played. You'll never notice it if you just watch the film by itself, but if you go to the shorts, the original short that was done by Warner Brothers of this same scene, it fades in that scene to Bugs Bunny talking on the phone. Well, in the film, there is no fade. So I think what they did, and this is verified by something that I caught, I think they repeated the same couple of frames of them singing in the animation to create the long shot of them finishing what they were saying. And then they fade to black and you see Porky Pig. Well, in the original short, Bugs Bunny says something on the phone. Now I say that because if you watch the What's Up Dog film that we've just watched, as they're fading off the song, you can very slightly hear Bugs Bunny about to say something. It was only because I was wearing earphones editing that I noticed it, but I'll play it here so you can tell the difference between two. So here's the original. And here's the version in the film we just watched. Do you see what I mean? I, I don't know if you can hear it. Unless you're wearing earphones, you might not be able to hear it. I'll try and boost it as much as I can in edit. But yeah, not noticed anyone else mentioned this at all, so I thought I'd let you know. Anyway, back to the video. Going into this river in a second, it will probably answer a lot of these questions. But yeah, I just, I love the film. There's so many good bits in there. Every scene was so well acted, so well written. The stunts being so well perfected and i have to say stunts because the whole scene in the bedroom with the tv exploding and the the window smashing and her falling and having to hold on to the ledge and then come popping back up and be like hey the whole thing was so well choreographed there were certain times when it felt very much like a dance and there were scenes when they did do a little dance like dotting and dancing between each room you know what I mean. You know what I'm trying to say. Normally things are a little bit more well formulated with what I'm trying to say at the end here. But with this one, that was such a whirlwind of a film. I'm still trying to process the majority of what was in the film. But I think it was just really fun. That's the whole point. It's just meant to be a bit of fun. Yeah, I've got to admit, the, the wife character, Eunice, I didn't like her. She annoyed me. She was meant to annoy people, I know. Um, but it's funny because there was a scene in the car when they're traveling down the hill and the manager of the hotel or whoever that guy was, the, the, the wealthy guy, uh, was talking to her. In that moment, in my head, and I was going to say it aloud, but I thought, no, just going to not talk for a minute because I feel like I, I talk a lot sometimes. So I kept it to myself and I was like, oh, they kind of feel like they would get together in the end. And then what happens at the end? Him and Eunice get together. <laughs> so I should have said it. But yeah, the, seeing the judge try and figure it all out was funny as hell. Oh, and one of the other scenes I really loved was uh, the end of the car chase where they all go... <laughs> Very well done. Again, the stunts so well put together. Right, I'm sure there's something else that I could specifically say about this other than the comedy being top notch. I'm going to go into the trivia, I think. Find out a little bit more about it. And then I might say a couple of other things at the end. Well, it's funny that I mentioned Bond at some point to do with the film. Remember I said about the uh, Scooby-Doo and Bond together, like this weird amalgamation. It kind of felt like that with the scene uh, them running from door to door. Apparently this is the first American film to credit the stunt people in the credits. The first British film to do so was the James Bond film Moonraker. 
from 1979. Oh! The fender bender Judy causes as she crosses the street to the Bristol Hotel was added on the spare of the moment. When no stunt cars were available, Peter Bogdanovich instructed a crew member to rent two cars and make sure he got collision insurance. That's cheeky! But I love that. Has anybody else thought of that before? Then he staged the wreck before returning the battered cars. Imagine returning them. Sorry, I know, I know we kind of wrecked your cars, but don't worry. Give it a little while and they'll be out on film. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're going to be in a film. Completely wrecked. <laughs> so. Oh, this is quite funny because I actually have this film and I've not seen this film. That's the reason why I've never really got the correlation between the, the two. Ryan O'Neill parodies one of his earlier performances at the end of the movie. And I didn't even know he was in that film. It's just now whilst it's saying it, me thinking about it, I've seen the picture on it. And it is him. Ryan O'Neill parodies one of his early performances. At the end of the movie, Judy Maxwell says... Love means never having to say you're sorry. A line from Love Story from 1970. Love Story is a film which I do have. I've not seen it yet. If you guys think I should watch Love Story on the channel... Anyway, Twitch O'Neill's character, Howard Bannister, replies... That's the dumbest thing I ever heard. They added a pause crosscut because the laugh was so loud after Judy's line that Howard's line could not be heard. Yes, I was right. So even though I've not seen the film Bullet, I said in the last chasing, because so I've seen that chase scene, that specific, or well, part of that scene anyway, it's one of my dad's favourite films. He showed me this scene. I think it's in set in San Francisco because I remember seeing the car flying. And here it says the final chase scene is a spoof of one of the most of the then recent movie uh, Bullet from 1968. There you go. It's also filmed in San Francisco, costing one million dollars to shoot, which is a quarter of the total budget, 19 days to shoot, requiring 32 stuntmen, resulting in 11 minutes of screen time. The segment with the giant pane of glass alone took four or five days to film. Really? Two days at max. The plate glass bit was filmed at the junction of Balboa and 23rd Avenue in San Francisco's Richmond district. It's quite funny that I picked up on that though, on the, the bullet kind of... I didn't think it was a reference, I thought it was just, oh, it reminds me of it, or oh, it's it's kind of reminiscent of, of it, or a homage to it. I, I didn't think that. Apparently when Howard Bannister ends up at the rooftop cocktail lounge, which was under construction, it was not a set. Oh, right. It was actually the starlight roof of the Hilton, which was being remodeled at the time. The view of San Francisco is the actual view from the room. A piano was brought up and placed in the room for the shot. Barbara Streisand sang the song live. You're kidding me. Not to a recording, because Director Peter Bogdanovich wanted her singing to sound natural as she stepped down from the top of the piano. Damn, she is a professional. It sounded stunning. Not just because she's singing. <laughs> it sounded fantastic. As you can see, I've got a bit of a soft spot for, <laughs> for uh, Barbara Streisand. <laughs> oh, no. Director Peter Bogdanovich did not get permission from the city of San Francisco to drive the cars down the concrete steps in Ulta Plaza Park. These were badly damaged during filming and still show the scars today. That is something you would get permission for because that is not a public roadway, public highway, whatever you want to call it. How, how did they even, did they film it at a time of day maybe when it was just very empty? Do you know what I mean? Because they, it was empty. There was there was no one on the stairs to, I'll, I'll read on so it'll probably say, because of the damage to city property during the filming of the movie, San Francisco now requires productions to provide with its filming permit application, a very detailed scene by scene breakdown of everything that the company is asking permission to film. I can understand why. But no one in their right mind filming a film thinks I am going to slam three or so cars down this set of stairs. I'm not going to bother asking permission from the council, from the city itself, you know. As his part is inspired by the stuffy professor played by Cary Grant in Bringing Up Baby. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, from 1938, Ryan O'Neill met with Grant. Wow, he met up with Cary Grant. The only advice he received, <laughs> the only advice he received 
was to wear silk underpants. So they silk underpants that we see in the scene when he's just only got underpants on and a bow tie. Brilliant. The film was morphed from the screen adaptation of Herman Rauch's or Ra Raucher, uh, novel A Glimpse of Tiger. It was to star Elliot Gould and Kim Darby and be directed by Anthony Harvey. But Gould behaved erratically during production and, after four days, walked off set. The project eventually came into the hands of Peter Bogdanovich, conceiving it as a remake of Howard Hawke's Bring Out Baby from 1938, switched the genders of the lead couple, making the wild, unpredictable Gould character a woman, who would be played, coincidentally, by Gould's ex-wife, Barbara Streisand. I didn't know that there was even a relationship in there with that, or an ex-relationship in there with that. Genuinely, I love finding out these kinds of bits of information. It blows my mind every time, because we always find out so many weird and wacky and wonderful things that I would never have known just by watching the film. Yeah, okay, maybe I could watch some behind the scenes things, but I'm not being funny with these days. It's so difficult to, you know, happen upon some of the behind the scenes things. I don't know. It seems to be that in certain places physical media is just being cut off. I'm just gonna have a look at what the other film is that I've seen of Barbara Streisand's. Funny Girl. It was Funny Girl I've seen. From what I remember I didn't watch it normally. I actually watched it in VR cinema. If you don't get a chance to go to the cinema, right, and if you've got some spare cash, I know it's very difficult to do it, or if you've already got a VR headset, get something to watch films in cinema. It's incredible. It's like you're there. Honestly, what I did is when one of the films came out, for the life of me, I can't remember which one it was now, there was one of the modern films that came out a little while ago, and uh, it was a couple of years ago actually now, but when that came out, I sat down, bowl of popcorn, put on the headset, earphones on, so you're not having to, you know, hear everything around you whilst, uh, even though it's quiet, but hear everything around you whilst you're, you've got the headset on. Press play on the film and it's like you're sitting in the cinema, you're eating your popcorn, you've got the surround sound which sounds like you're there in the theatre and you're hearing it in surround sound. And it was like over lockdown and that. I was in my element because I was still going to the cinema but in VR and it's brilliant. You can bring your friends along, like you can invite your friends. Honestly, if there's any companies out there and you want to sponsor me, <laughs> I love it. I love VR cinema. So I've used big screen VR um, but big screen VR you have to pay more money for it. From what I can remember, the one I've used, it was originally free I think, but I have a feeling you now pay, it's not a lot of money, but you pay for Skybox VR, I wanna say it's called, and in that you get a better range of cinema viewing. So if you get big screen, it's very, it can be clunky at times and you can either sit in this home setting, which is fine, but you only really get that one home setting. But if you want to get the proper VR, even better is get this Skybox VR. And this is in no way a sponsorship. Sponsor me if you want. You can watch 3D films on there. 3D films in VR cinema, amazing. Skybox VR, you don't necessarily have to just sit in a cinema. You could be sitting on the moon, not physically on the moon, but I mean in the VR headset, it looks like you're watching the film on the moon. Also, on a, as a little side note, VR wise, very, very quickly, there's a NASA app where you can basically be in VR going through the space station and then you get to walk on the outside of the space station. It's one of the most nerve wracking things ever, but it's amazing. Anyway, back onto the trivia. I think the one film I've not seen of Barbara Streisand's because I was just looking through her catalogue of films. I've seen the new Star is Born, but I've not seen her version of it. I want to say that's the original, but it's not. Uh, I think there was an earlier version from like the 30s, I want to say. Yeah. Wait, the first film that she was in, was it? The first film that she was in was Funny Girl in 1968. Really? And this was the fifth film she was in? I didn't know that. Yeah, the first thing she was in was Funny Girl in 1968. She was in a film called Funny Lady, plays Fanny Bryce. Is that a follow on then? It must be a follow on to uh, Funny Girl because Funny Girl is Fanny Bryce as well. And obviously Funny Girl, Funny Lady. Let me know guys, let me know what your um, thoughts are of me checking out another Barb Streisand film and which one to check out. <laughs> the long haired blonde delivery boy whose bike Judy steals is played by Kevin O'Neill, which is Ryan O'Neill's brother. The woman she sits next to on the plane, the final scene is Patricia O'Neill, their mother. Aww. So he kisses Barbara Streisand in front of his mother, basically. <laughs> this was the feature film debut of Madeline Kahn, who plays Eunice. 
Okay, this reminded me, because I said it's a very quirky kind of comedy film. This is the name that I was thinking of for the style of comedy. It's a screwball comedy, but screwball just makes me think of those ice creams. Screwballs. Are they called screwballs? Remember, the thing, they're like a cone shape with a little bubble gum at the bottom? Was that, that was called a screwball, wasn't it? Uh, but yeah, one of the film's main taglines is a screwball comedy. Remember them? But that was also the name of the short promo documentary featurette made to promote the movie as well. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, Sylvester Stallone is an extra in the film. However, he is not seen very clearly in his scenes as he's walking far away in the background. <laughs> but then I could say that. I could say, oh no, that, that episode of blah, 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 that, that film of blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'm in there in the background. See that, see that really blurry figure there in the background? You no, know, slightly up there. Yep, the gray hair guy there. Just, that's me. It could be anybody. He could just be saying it's him. Oh, a male stuntman was used to double for Barbara Streisand in the long shots of her riding the bicycle. During one hairpin turn, he fell off and broke his ankle. Ouch. Oh, I wondered at the time if it was a reference to anything. I wasn't sure if it was like a comedy reference or something. Uh, during the big chase scene, a man is chased by the large number of trash cans. You know, when they, they crash into the dress-up shop and then you immediately see this guy running down the street with a couple of trash cans chasing after him. That is an homage to Buster Keaton's short Seven Chances from 1925. Oh, I don't know how true this bit of information is, but in the scene where the car's driving to the water, the stuntman who was standing up in the Cadillac convertible suffered a severe concussion when he hit the water. He cannot recall doing the stunt for years afterwards. Damn, imagine taking on a film role doing this, this this big stunt and then when the film comes out you, you go to see it because you think oh that looks like a really cool film to go and see you go and watch it and you go huh oh, that was awesome I, I love that 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 crash scene there and like your friend or partner where was going that that would that was you you know that right that was that was you and you go what that'd be so heartbreaking and then many years afterwards you then or maybe you didn't even go to the cinema to see it completely miss the screening of it and the premiere of it because you didn't know you were going to be in it you then you know years later find this film and then go wait that's me Wh what <laughs> well you, it just dawns on you it comes back to you and you go wait no i missed it i missed the premiere of it. <laughs> okay one guy that i think works very well as comedy actor and apparently he wasn't even a, an actor liam dunn who plays the judge was originally a casting director before Peter Bogdanovich cast him in this. Fantastic. He did a stellar job. His timing for the, the little comedy, like facial expressions and stuff, perfect. Uh, during the chase scene, the large black limo loses its hood during a hard turn. It was an accident, but they then kept it in the film. Yeah, stuff like that. Always keep in there because it, it kind of makes it feel like it was meant to happen. Ryan O'Neill's line in the airport terminal goes, Judy? Judy. Well, Judy, I get... Judy? Judy. It's an homage to Cary Grant, who starred in Bringing Up Baby, the film that inspired the movie. Although Grant never says Judy, Judy, Judy in any film, the line was constantly attributed to him. <laughs> there are so many wonderful facts to do with this film. To prepare for this film, apparently Bogdanovich had Ryan O'Neill and Barbara Streisand watch The Lady Eve from 1941. Oh my god. When Judy Maxwell is seen on the outside ledge of the hotel, it was filmed on the soundstage in Burbank, which is why I thought, never thought any of it was real. Um, however, the long shot of Judy standing on the ledge is actually a stunt woman who was hired to dangle from a building in Westwood, California. Scary as hell. If I was hired to do a job, as long as I knew that the area was safe, maybe I had a harness or a parachute or something, but not just there. Yeah, the guy I was thinking, Cousin Eddie Johnson from Christmas Vacation. That was the guy who plays the uh, Professor Hosquith. It's Randy Quaid. Um, Quaid had previously worked with the director Pete uh, Bogdanovich. Quaid had previously worked with the director in his debut movie, The Last Picture Show from 1971. There you go. So it was him. Yeah, I love that. Oh, it's, it's easy to tell it was him though. Interesting, and I have no idea how they worked around this, but Kenneth Mars, who played the foreign man, um, the guy in there with the 
or the hair that kept going all over the place. Yeah, he ad-libbed almost all of his dialogue according to this, which is so fun. So many wacky things. And they played off that so well. You would never have noticed that he ad-libbed it. I wonder if they ad-libbed any lines back or if he just kind of, you know, ad-libbed roles around other lines that were there to give the answer that was those other lines that were already scripted. Okay, this is cool. When Judy Maxwell first enters the Bristol Hotel, a piano version of Cole Porter's Anything Goes can be heard in the background. Cole Porter also wrote You're the Top, the song that begins and ends the movie. When Howard and Judy are left alone talking in the Bristol Ballroom after the convention, Night and Day can be heard in the background. Another Porter song. It's ironic that Cary Grant, as well, the actor that it is said that the film was an homage to, played Porter in the Porter biopic, Night and Day, from 1946. Superb. So many Cole Porter bits in there. And they all work together really well. But I didn't know the whole Cary Grant thing before I set out to watch this, because Cary Grant is one of my favourite, you know, older kind of acts, if that makes sense. You know, the actors from way back in the day. Him and James Stewart are two of my favourites. Okay, this bit I didn't hear. Again, like this comment does say, it is pretty difficult to, to hear uh, because of everything that's going on. But during the bailiff's opening instructions to the court, the judge's name is included in the instructions. But it is a bit difficult to discern, but it does spoil that he is related to Judy. That, honestly, that bit, didn't expect coming a mile off, but it's so funny that you could see her hiding there and I thought it was just that she didn't wanna, you know, she didn't wanna get in trouble. I didn't expect it to be that he was her dad. Such a great twist on the situation, superbly done. Anyway guys, that is all of the trivia that I'm going to give you guys today. There is a ton on IMDb. Go and check it out. What's up, Doc? 1972. Watch the film, check out some of the trivia, and have a whale of a time. And I hope you really, really enjoyed this. Again, if you want to see the full reactions to this, you can check it out over on the Patreon page. I've got loads more coming soon. Uh, I've got a couple of other films that I need to watch at some point uh, that have been requested. And this one specifically was requested on Patreon, so thank you so much requesting this and again if you want to get priority requests go and uh, request those over on the patreon and if you do suggest any films to me in the comments whether it's on this video or any of my other videos i do write those down onto a suggestion list i've still got it it's it's a massive list of films and i'm slowly working my way through it as well as prioritizing the patreon requests as well. I hope you guys are doing fantastic. Feel free to request any films below as well. If you've got any favourite Barra Streisand films you want me to check out. I've seen Funny Girl already so I won't be watching that on the channel but if you want me to see Funny Lady I'll happily watch that on the channel or any of the others. Hope you guys are doing really well today. Thank you so much as well if you've subscribed to the channel whether it's before you subscribed or you've seen this video and you really like it, you've liked it and you've subscribed to the channel. I appreciate it and it means a lot to me that you do love these videos. Also don't forget you can check out my letterboxd account as well. Anyway guys thank you so much for watching, take care, stay safe and have an absolutely amazing day and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye! If you're still here to the very end, then thank you so much, and also a huge thank you to my wonderful patrons. Roger C. Griffith, Douglas Collier, Terry V, Miggy Love, Chris Holmes, Jojo, Thomas Masters, Shoehorn1234, Ress, Patrick Durr, Andrew Blount, Carlos, Marla Mize, Rob, Chandra Blair, Scott, Paul Zawicki, Randy, Kirsten, Juan Pablo Camero, JL, Maggie, Freya Alexandra, Milo, Miranda, Edna, Gina Aman, Tess Avaland, Olivia, Maria Stoicheva, Nasesno, Megan Janoviak, Rainy Tomo, Strawberry Tree, Kirsten Bailey, Boobly Boo, Louise Vanderhoven, Aubrey Terry, Wraithist, Heidi Steele, City D, Bumblebee, Joshua, Jesse, Rena Burra, Meet, Lolita Verbakovskia, Eli, Holly Jeffries, Elenka Hafner, HM Garth, Chloe Grover, Neb, Kyle Baker, Abby Barker, Tom Tattershall, Kristen Olds, Tilly Chum, Laura Hutchison, Tara M. Will Coxon, Sazzy Nation, Ferdinand Pitchard, Jim McKay, Sphere, Mel Days, and Fran in the Pen. If you'd like to see more videos, there's some more on the screen right now. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and see you next time.